situation. Um, well, oh, okay, so remember I said before that the fewer number of users in um, um, uh, the fewer number of users in a cell, the uh, less um, the less penalty that the users will get because the users will get more bandwidth to start with. Um, so in this case, they have only two users in a cell. One one of them is an attacker. So in this way, uh, and and also because um, they are attacking the HTTP. Uh, oh, sorry, they are using HTTP to attack the the, the TCP uh, flow control. So once they send the burst of traffic, they can show that this would cause the TCP to time out. Okay. Since they are not directly modifying the reported channel quality. Their attack is not would not be as effective as our attack, and also since they don't do uh, the, the handover, so their attack cannot perpetuate. Uh, there are some other attacks on cellular data networks, uh, on cellular networks. So there are attacks on the SMS. Uh, so this attack shows that uh, you can use SMS to uh, overwhelm the um, uh, patient channels. So patient channels is patient channel is a channel by which um, when you turn on your cell phone. Um, well, your your um, well. So when you, when you, when you call a cell phone, if the cell phone is not active, then the your, your cellular network will use the patient channel to uh, find the cell phone. So they discovered that uh, you can send SMS messages to overwhelm um, the patient channel, and uh, there are also uh, attacks on the connection establishments, and uh, also includes our uh, previous work on attacking the battery power of cell phones using the internet. Okay, so in conclusion, um, the um, we, we we think that uh, um, the fundamental flaw, a fundamental flaw in the design of the cellular networks, is that uh, they grant unwarranted trust to mobile devices, and we discovered two particular vulnerabilities in the proportional fair scheduler. One is that um, um, malicious cell phones can report fake channel quality information. The other is that the malicious cell phones can request handover, and when they do handover, their average throughput is not carried over with them. And we demonstrated that the attack can severely reduce the bandwidth and increase delay um, of all the uh, victim users, and they can uh, essentially sh um, makes, they can essentially make the voice over IP application useless. And we proposed uh, an approach to enforce global fairness to uh, prevent the attack from happening in the first place. I would be happy to uh, take questions. I, uh, so I have a question. So the. Um, uh, I, I didn't get the uh, you know the justification why uh, you it is not a good solution to let the base station kind of limit the rate uh, res like the time slots received by each cell phone uh, at any time. So I think that's kind of like a good uh, uh, kind of policing kind of policy. My second question is: uh, Does this apply to both uplink and downlink? Ah, good question. Let me answer the second question first. That's easier. So the question is that uh, does this attack apply to both uplink and downlink? No, this is this is only um, this only applies to the downlink, because only the downlink uses a pr uh, proportional fair um, uh, scheduling. Okay. But what does the up? What do they use for the uplink? I'm just curious. Um, they use for the, uh, well. Uh, let's see. What do they use for um, uplink? Um, I think uh, they don't. Uh, let's see. Uh, so f for downlink, once um, the the base station gets some data, outstanding data, the base station will decide who, uh, which cell phone to to send to. Uh, for uplink, I I believe that. Uh, okay, I shouldn't give you wrong information. <laughs> okay, um, I, I can I can tell you offline, but I don't want to give you false information. Uh, the first question is that uh, why can't the base station? Um, have a limit on the bandwidth of each um, cellular user. Cellular users, uh, the base station could do that, but once you do that, you begin to uh, interfere with the scheduling algorithm. So essentially, you are you are putting additional constraints 
on the scheduling algorithm. Now, once you begin to do that, you begin you probably you could violate certain properties that have been proved for this scheduling algorithm. Okay, so when people design a scheduling algorithm, they have certain objectives, and they prove that uh, this algorithm satisfies those properties. But once you add additional constraints to that, then maybe those properties cannot hold anymore. Okay, so this is one problem. Another problem is that uh, it's hard to come up with a reasonable limit. Uh, it depends on how many users there are in the system, and also what are other, say, quality of service constraints. It's hard to get a number that, that, that's good in different scenarios. And sometimes slots may be just wasted in doing that, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, other, other questions? Yes. Uh, so, so I wonder how sensitive the tag is to the correctness of the estimation of the this CQI, and also uh, how uh, whether the correctness depends on simulation parameters. So, if if the, maybe in real network, maybe the the other cell cell phone work, uh, have different situation at the simulation, then would the correctness drop significantly? Yes, uh, those are both excellent ex excellent questions. So, the first question is that uh, um, does the uh, effectiveness effectiveness of the attack depends on the, um, the the quality of the estimation of the CQI. Yes, definitely it does. It does. Um, think about it. The estimation tells the attacker what channel quality indicator to report. If the report is too low, then the attacker's ratio is not the highest, so the attacker won't get the next slot. If the estimation is too high, um, that doesn't really hurt. Because then the attacker can get, um, well, okay, so that could hurt because uh, the attacker will get the next slot, but uh, it can't utilize the high bandwidth, right? It's, it's, it's wasting its, uh, its average throughput because its, its throughput will, will be increased more than, uh, more than it, it needs to. Um, so, yes, so the first question is definitely yes. So that's why we measure the, the, we measure the, the accuracy of our estimation. The second question is that uh, does the quality of the estimation depend on our simulation parameters? Absolutely, it does. Um, however, in our simulation, uh, we simulated the channel quality of the victim users using a standard, um, a standard Rayleigh distribution, okay, which, as far as I know, is, uh, is, a, is a typical, um, typical model. Uh, when you try to uh, analyze the, the channel quality of different mobile users, okay. Uh, yes, if the, uh, the, the, the um, if this model deviates from your actual situation, then yes, the quality of your estimation will will uh, will, 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 will change. Yeah. 